So up until now when drawing these ray diagrams, it seems you can make the magnification as big as you like, you know, within reason. You don't want to make a, a, a lens which is you know, a kilometre across. But is that the only thing that determines the resolution? Or what if you're focusing down, like in this diagram here, what's the smallest size spot you can make with a lens? Now the important thing to realise here is that ray optics is an oversimplification. So the resolution, that is the smallest spot you can make, is something you cannot determine with ray optics, you need to think about waves in order to figure out what the smallest resolution is. Now there's some minimum spot size here, d, little d, which is actually determined by wave considerations and we'll discover what that minimum size is in a few videos time. But let's just imagine now that it's d. And we imagine light coming in at some small angle theta r, which is different to the optical axis. So we've got some light coming in this angle, makes a spot with diameter d, and another bit of light coming in parallel that makes another spot with diameter d. And we ask the question, what angle theta r do you need such that these two spots are separated, that they're resolvable? So the smallest diameter spot you can focus down to is given by this equation here. It's called Abbe's limit. It's the wavelength of the light divided by 2 sine theta, where theta is this angle here. So it's the angle, the maximum angle for one ray which comes in from the top of the lens compared to the optical axis. So it's, it's half the angle subtended by this cone of light, in other words. So this is Abbe's limit, and this d then is determined by the wavelength and the size of the lens. Because you make the lens bigger, you make theta bigger. So smaller wavelength means d is smaller, bigger angle means d is smaller. Okay, so let's try and figure out what theta r is in terms of other parameters in this problem. So theta r can be written approximately as d divided by f. So d is the diameter of these spots. So if we have two of these spots next to each other, if we go from the middle of this spot to the middle of this spot, that's the distance d. And then the distance from this spot to the lens is f, the focal length. And we have this angle here, theta r, which is the same as this angle here, theta r. So the the tan of theta r will be d divided by f. That's going to be a very small angle, so we write tan theta r is approximately equal to theta r, and we get theta r equal to d on f. Okay, so next we can substitute d from Abbe's limit. So d equals lambda on 2 sine theta. But what is theta? Well, theta is this angle here, which is the angle subtended by this sort of focusing arrangement here from the optical axis through to the ray, which just grazes the top of this lens. So th tan theta will be given by half the diameter of the lens, so that's d divided by 2. This height here is capital D divided by 2, divided by f. That will be the tan of theta. So tan theta is d divided by 2f. So theta is inverse tan of d divided by 2, 2f. So we substitute that into here. So this is our theta. So we get theta r now is equal to d on f, which is equal to lambda on 2f sine theta, and theta is given by arctan, capital D, on 2f. Now, we can approximate this for the case where the focal length is much, much bigger than the diameter, and this will be valid for something like a telescope, where the focal lengths can be very large compared to the diameter of the lens. Less valid for a microscope, however. Anyway, in this limit, we get that the resolution, theta r, the angular resolution, is approximately equal to lambda divided by d, the diameter of the lens. So we see that smaller wavelengths are good, and larger diameter lenses are good for improving resolution.